Coyote flashing and boarding. So we're just out here heading up towards the lease there. Blake's got himself a new ride or new to him ride. And I got old school. And we got Ben there on his old trusty wide track. But just coming out that way, looks like we got some wolf tracks. Two to three of them heading towards the lease. Let's go see if we get lucky. Okay, we're just getting on to lease here. And uh, wolf tracks galore. So they're messing around here. They go in there. In the back corner is where we have our bait. I'm gonna go up over here to turn around and see if they come in that trail. And that's where, years ago, that's where they used to come from across there into here. So we'll see if we get lucky here. At least they've been hanging around and this is fresh, we got snow yesterday. So it's probably in the last six hours or so. A little bit of snow coming down now. So we'll go in there and check her out. Okay, it looks like they came from this tango mess here. And big tracks heading this way. And they, a couple of them go in there. And they're playing in the cut line here. And if they go that way, they'll maybe run into our snares. So we're going to go in there and take a look. Okay, we're in the corner here, and all kinds of wolf tracks. They dug down there to get the juice, and uh, have that power around there or nothing. I'll go check around the corner, but looks like they might have gone back out that way. The trail they came in on is over here, a little bit different than what I was thinking on over here. I do see my one snare is missing. Maybe it's knocked down. I'm gonna go check her out. That snare's still there. Oh, that one's still there too. So they didn't come in this way. Turn you on in a second if anything gets exciting here. Snuck inside here and it doesn't look like they came near our snares. They kind of came further in and angled from this direction here. Our snares are over on this side here. And uh, yeah, so we're going to walk in a little bit further and see where they came across. I did see their tracks on that one spot. We picked up that one coyote where we had the power ram before. But this is some old tracks here. Let's go find the new tracks. Well, too bad that wasn't a, a wolf there. But we checked them out and carried on. The main trail is right there where they went through. So this is where the wolves went back in. In here, fortunately I don't have any snares, so they angled in from here, came out here, and then kind of went back to where we just were. They didn't put snares this far back because they used to come down an old line in there and then come in from the corner. But different path, different rules. One more snare to check up here. And we're done here. Yeah, that's where they came through. Just needed to go over another 20 yards and we got some snares. Oh yeah. Catch you in a sec. Gonna walk in and check the bait here. We got a big old Tomcat Lynx.
I don't know if you can see him there. But he was here, he claimed uh, that's yeah, a big guy there. Claim these wolves. There's his tracks. So lynx, when they eat and the food's pro uh, frozen, they just have to lay here and then lick it. And that's how they eat. But doesn't look like much else has been here. Just it and a few birds. Interesting. He's just over there. Maybe 50 yards sitting down. Watching us. Okay, I'm going to carry on on our trip here. Well, made it home there and a little discouraged. The wolves kind of dodged my snares. But we kind of knew from last time they were kind of coming from the other side. But on the way out, like all that activity there where I stopped and videoed and then I went to the loop. They were walking on my skidoo trail from before and then where I left the elk guts and stuff like that, they dug down and then I turned around and just stayed on their skidoo tracks. And then I found where they had drug the elk carcass and he just went there and sniffed and then stayed out in the open. So they didn't really mill around in uh, where the snares were, kind of crossed through, popped out in that one spot. And then, yeah, followed the skidoo tracks after that around and then back out. That was interesting, smarter for next year. Uh, they did change things up compared to the year before, but that's how it is. Today, we're gonna be busy turning these coyotes here, finishing fleshing that, and then tomorrow that face can come off. The fishers are pretty much thawed out now, so I'll give them a quick yard. And then I'll try and at least get these pelts off and then maybe freeze them because I won't have time to flush them. Slowly catching up. If a guy didn't have a full-time job, could have some fun, but got to pay the bills, right? Had a little issue there with my back this morning, slowed me down, but we got through that, feeling better now. Well, the beavers aren't going to be ready for a couple more days. It doesn't look like I flipped them over. They were froze. But we finished off a few more pelts there. Turned the lynx, it was ready, and the one coyote was good. And I got the fishers on the boards. Fleshed uh, a wolf pelt there. That one was damaged in the head and stuff. So I just kind of did it up, see if we can turn it over and get it tanned up and maybe sell it for crafts or get something made out of it. These ones here, going to be a bit... Cleaned the wolf skulls up here, took their faces off and froze them up. So we'll be good there. Everything was done around eight and then now I've just been sitting, taking care of some comments. Have been a little bit slow on the videos lately, but I've just been busy buying fur and catching up on other stuff and then it's tough to get going again. And that's one thing I'm worried about with uh, people trapping. Once prices come back, it might take them a while to get back into it. But anyways, this is a wrap for the night and heading in, gonna have a shower, chill out a bit and off to work tomorrow. Well, today is gonna turn some pelts in the shop and maybe throw a few carcasses away. But if you look around here, we're getting some snow. Probably got about three inches so far. Doesn't look like it's slowing down. Anyways, we can still go in the shop and turn some stuff, but cleaning up my mess, I have to wait. Well, we're gonna do our evening, or late afternoon turning. Coyotes are still a bit froze. I turn the heat down again in here, so they'll be good for tomorrow. Wolves are slowly stretching out. And I should have came and turned them this morning, but the fishers will be nice and stiff. Perfect. And I turned that wolf there too. And uh, yeah, and that'll be enough to keep me busy until I go out to fire practice tonight. So turn in a bit of pelts. 
Nice looking black wolf. Only thing was caught around the mouth and it, uh, it's all rubbed and raw. Hair is peeling off. Might be able to salvage for a wall hanger, but not for a taxidermy mount, that's for sure. The gums, lips ripped on this side. It was froze when I bought it. Couldn't see. Lesson learned. Not going to do that again. Dooms is doing this. I don't know if you can see through the corner. Um, there's an open area back in there, and I'll walk through here in a second and show it to you. We're on this real hard beaten um, field road here. So there's no. Okay, I thought I'd show you how to do a foot, not sure if it'll work out or not in the video. But, so what I do is I cut them off at the ankle and then I'll split it right up to the pad. And just touch the pad, get that nice and open. Just run my knife and open things up a bit more. Keep the tension, rolling it back. So I get it part ways down, where I think I can get a good hook and into that joint there or something here. Of course, it's not gonna play proper. Okay, there we go. So I can get some tension on it. Just lift it up a bit. White, cutting that white membrane. Gonna have a dew claw right here. Find the joint. Pop it off. Chase her down the side of the foot. From this side. Not very graceful, just trying to get it done. Always cutting that white membrane and keeping tension on it. Come to the pad side and I just uh, run my knife along the back of the bones here, away from the pad on the back side. And that generally helps me roll it up, roll the pad forward and just make sure you don't cut. pad or the other around the pad. You know we're just eventually just kind of pop open here. Making that a little bit further down on the back side here. Pads rolling forward here. Keep some tension on it. I can put my knife and run it up. Between the toes, just helps free it up a bit. So this is where I'm gonna cut. I can take side cutters and cut that bone or I can just go up to this joint up here my knife in it. I'm just gonna wiggle it through, pop it out, go to the other side. Bring it up. Move these toes a little tug here. Cut this joint here. Foot off, and now we're going to go over to the, the vise here. I'll show you something there. Well, 
Okay, so now we're over at the vice. It's doing a fur handling workshop. And uh, I did this years ago and I kind of forgot about it. And the student said, hey, this is what taxidermists used to do. And uh, yeah, so I'm just working my way around to the last joint. Keeping the tension on there. Bringing it around. Once you get to that joint. Keep the tension and there you go. Again, just keep in tension there. Cutting that white membrane. Once you get to the, close to the end, you can give her a good tug and the joint will be right there. Careful not to cut the leather. There you go, another joint. You're getting into a rhythm. It doesn't take long at all. There you go. Another one. Sometimes you get it really torqued up on them in the hole. See that member in there? You just cut that and kind of free it up. You can give it another tug. It really rolls it forward. And joints right in there. That one took the longest, but we're good. Looks like I nicked it there. My bad. Must have, been, must, must have did that when I was pulling it down. Yeah, I'm glad that student mentioned that. I used to use vice, vice grips, and I use this bench, but it's not handy. Got to kind of get up and go towards it. Same process for the back feet. There you go, and then I can remove the pad real easy, and there's nothing in the way. I like buying. What was done with the feet for the pockets? It gives us a lot more options versus when they're split open because all the toes are all damaged and they're really only good for rugs. There you go. Maybe I'll see about the back feet here.
I think the back feet are usually easier, but. Oops. That's the bottle recycling. They're gonna let that ring there, and there's gonna be some wolf tools in there. Another foot down. We're on a roll. Countdown's going on. Oh, this one I left in the stubbies. Then I nicked the pad there. Cut these ones off with the side cutter there. My bad. So good so you see if you leave a lot of toe on the better it is we're getting it off when you put it in the vise I did that for a little teaching moment so you can see Suck it up the first time. Oh, that didn't work out. work it out. Even when you mess up, it's a little quicker this way. Thank <laughs> you. 
coming. Last but not least, so always leave yourself some bone to work with. And there you go, four wolf feet done in no time. Now off to you, the lips. So for the lips, I like to have a sharp knife. I like to have a sharp blade. And how I like to start in the corner of the mouth. These are freezer, or outside froze a little bit. They're not too bad. So, lay it over my lap. And just kind of roll it open. Once you get the corner of the mouth started, see if uh, you can see there. It was pretty good after that. I gotta figure out a quicker way to do it. I don't know if there is one. Maybe if you have a tip out there or something. Leave it in the comments. So what we're doing is going right down to the black seam here. Right here is where that seam is. I'm just running the knife there, just laying it nice and flat. You have my fingers underneath and I can just feel when it lays flat. So right here, still a little bit. Now it's flat. When the freezer burnt, it just takes a little bit, just gotta be careful. You can get it. And I can just keep working up the face here. So the inner lip here from the outer lip inside the face. And then I just go all the way around. I'll get to about here, then I'll start on the other side and come and do the nose. This seems to be a little easier for me. And just go until the lower ridge is right flat, but not too far where it's straight through to the other side. And taxidermists can finish it off too if you send it to a taxidermist. So they get paid the big bucks for. If I'm not a taxidermist, I don't have patience for that. These Avalon blades are 
They're not as good as they used to be, these two. Really good and stay sharp. Now this one's already getting dull. Barely even did anything. All my other knives are dull, so oh, let's see. It's a little sharper than the hell one, actually. Working my way down. Because this freezer burns a little bit, you just gotta work it. You could rehydrate it a little bit. Feels pretty good. A little bit right here. The tax room is friendly, he says I do a good job. There's another custom skinner in uh, Grant Prairie, Dale Dry Herb, who does a really good job too. This is all rock hard here. So what I might do, well, it's already dried out so I could leave it or hydrate it and then split it some more. But what I think is saying there years ago when I used to guide a taxidermist told me, as long as you get down to about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, if you salt it or dry it properly, it's not going to spoil, then they can come back, rehydrate it, and finish it off. A lot of them always top this too because it's so thin. I like to do the ears when I'm, when I'm flashing it. And stand up and do it. And we'll come to the other side already. So I can just come here. Start cutting that, roll it back a bit. Again, I'm keeping my fingers underneath, just feeling. Right, I'm just feeling for this ridge, making sure I'm not getting too deep. It's hard to hard and dry there already. Those starts really my favorite. Skin. But 
always take your time, do a good job. It's to take me a lot longer to do rolls on the lips. But, few of you. And we come out not bad. Still got it lit. A couple of spots can go back and touch them up, but for the most part, oh my god! This the only thing that's there is the stuff that's already dried out. So the nose, the cartilage, you can take it right down to leather. I was told that you want to leave the cartilage on, but he says you can take it right down to leather. But I think I'll just... Uh, Pretty close. One thing about the face is you want to make sure not to uh, put any holes in there because it's really hard to to hide. Like this guy's got a bit of a scar, a couple of scars, and that's on that side, not this side. Pretty much down to the tip of the nose here, and on the sides a little bit more. And then I just taught just to split the cartridge so it dries down the middle there. And uh, that'll dry and we'll spoil. I heard that they stick that inside the form, and some guys do, some guys don't. But when I flesh it, I'll take a bit more meat off here, clean this up a bit. Like I said, I'll do the ears. And there you go. I'm gonna put it in the fridge. Maybe freeze it for a couple days. I got some stuff to do. And uh, one more wolf to kind of work on tomorrow night. Maybe I'll give it a little bit tonight and see how it is. But this one will get froze for till next week. And then I'll finish it off. Nobody likes an asshole. Except the tax service. I put it uh, leather on the inside just so it uh, stays hydrated, doesn't dry out. And there we go, here's our lips. Top and bottom, opened up, our nose. All right, off to the next one. Okay. We'll let it whittle down a little bit more. Just these two, that one will be thought out tomorrow. And uh, this guy won't be. Turn the heat down a little bit more in here, just so they're a slow thaw. Got those coyotes in there, and that fox. These beavers should be able to take them off tomorrow. They're still froze in the middle, which is good. And I decided I'm gonna leave that wolf in there and I'll look at that tomorrow night. Maybe do the lips and stuff and get that going. These coyotes and fishers can come off the board. Same with the lynx. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a night. Going to head in and uh, relax a little bit.